So yeah, the I got your message about the um, heads shooting out water. So about the only way that they can happen is that you are all of your exit ports for the water to exit the boat are plugged up. So um, I won't, if the head is blowing water right here at this point where this gasket is, um, it's because you're, you're overpressuring the system. And uh, so these bolts on the outside that go around the outside are the ones that take the head off. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. The little ones in the center, they don't have anything to do with taking the head off. So don't remove these little ones here. Those ones are just for this head cover thing. Uh, so this secondary head cover thing. So you don't want to mess with those. I'm not telling you to take the hat off, by the way, right now. What I want you to do first is just check the exit ports. Now, this is the back of the engine. This hose right here will connect and go to a, a box that sits right here. Let me go show you a uh, part of that. So here's the water, water box I'm talking about. So that fitting right there goes to that um, hose up on the back of the motor. This fitting is notoriously plugged, so you got to make sure this one is clear. And then it, then this is a discharge. This one has to be clear. You have to make sure that that hose is clear. And then on the other side of it is another one. That one has to be clear. And so everywhere that these hoses go, like this one will go to the back of the boat, that has to be, you have to make sure that that, that is clear also. So I'm not sure what kind of a boat you have, but I believe they're all the same, whether it's a fling or um, one of these Boston whalers. But this hose right here attaches to that box I was showing you. And that fitting right there is notoriously plugged up from mud wasps. And so the discharge water isn't moving anywhere, which is causing the pressure to just build up into the motor. So, um, which is a bad deal. And that filter right there, that should be all disassembled and cleaned and made sure that it's clear, as well as that hose should be clear out to the jet pump. And then there's one other smaller hose that exits. It's hiding down in there. It's right, see that one that's cut right there? It's right there. That one has to be blown through and cleared exiting the boat. So there's two exits to the boat. This one is the one that provides the water from the jet pump. And all that needs to be made sure that those, those hoses are clear before you install the motor. So, so one of the biggest mistakes customers make that we get is people hooking up a garden hose to their motor and turning it on thinking that it's all set. So very first step you need to remember before you ever hook a hose up to the garden or from the garden hose up to the motor is that the engine will run without uh, it will just sit there and run at an idle with no problems. It won't stall out. It'll just run. There's no problem starting that motor without having water to it. You can start it and let it run for 30 to seconds to a minute. No problem whatsoever. It won't hurt anything. It, you know, the motor will begin to warm up. When working with that engine, you're going to want to have one of these. This is a uh, thermos thermometer. And um, you're going to need one of these to, to get that engine, uh, making sure that it's okay. The best thing you can do is just get the engine so it'll start and run and take it down to the lake. It's the safest way. Because if you put water to that engine and then you do, and it isn't running, um, you can back the water up into the motor and hydro lock it. So um, that has to be done properly. You should get yourself a service manual. When working on a boat like that, there's one just like this. This is what you want. 
is a 90 to 115 turbojet service manual. And um, this will answer all your questions on it. This is the water flow diagram right here. Just going to move this slowly for you so you can see it. For how it comes through the jet pump. And then it circulates through the filter that I showed you. Then it goes up through the bottom of that. Of this. Which you got to make sure that hose is clear. Going into the bottom of this. This is called the muffler. Excuse me. That's called the muffler. And um, then it. It, it ends up going into the going up through the bottom of the motor and this is all the stuff I've assembled and I know all this is clean in here because uh, we built that right and then there's that T I was showing you right there there's that T I was showing you right there on the back of that engine on the bench at the beginning and it goes it goes to that fitting up on the top of that that thing that is notoriously plugged then this is the then the water goes down in there and then after it's in the muffler it it discharges it goes this way back into this unit here which i showed you back into that base thing that all has to be all these fittings and hoses you have to you have to manually blow through them with a blow gun and, and be sure that they're flowing air through them and that they're clear and then this is the exit one that goes out the back of the boat. That one is is almost assuredly plugged. And uh, uh, normally what we do is we take this hose off. We find where that discharge is on the back of the boat. And we'll put a, usually we have to put like a rod through it. Or a, like a big heavy wire because it's so packed full of mud wasps. And we do that obviously before we put the boat in. And here's the discharge also from that pan. That bottom muffler tray or bed plate, you could call it, discharging through here and through that little hose I just showed you on the back of that boat. That one also will be uh, plugged. This one is probably plugged. And uh, what's going on is that with, with what you have happening is just that um, you, you, you just were unaware of what to do there. Anyway, so here is, this is a 20 PSI system. And you're putting, you know, the pressure of, you know, your house water to it, which can exceed 50 PSI. You know, it can be 50, 60, 70 PSI at your house. So, um, as you can see, it says, uh, you know, as the water comes in, it goes, it goes to the motor going this way. This is, this is right, this is showing it from the jet pump. Right in there is a pressure relief valve. But it doesn't work if you hook a garden hose to it. You're bypassing that. So um, you got to be aware of that when you start putting water to an engine. And so when it, when it goes above 50 PSI, the water is going to exit right here, the jet pump. So it doesn't build up pressure into the motor because the motor can't handle it. So uh, I think that it's a possibility that it'll seal upright. It'll still be all right, but it might be a chance that... That heads are because we seal the head gaskets onto the motor, and it, they they may drip a little bit on the sides, like right here on the very side of the heads, um, uh, when you're running it in the lake. Now, uh, it really probably won't make any difference. The main one that you don't want it to leak to is this this portion of the gasket, which seals around, which seals around the the uh, cylinder. So if that if you if you if you are not getting any water into the cylinder, it's probably okay. But you may have to remove the cylinder head, and by the bolts I showed you, and replace reseal the gasket, or replace the gasket and um, reinstall them. If not, you're going to have to pack the engine up and strip it all the way back down again and send it to us, and we'll do it. Uh, but uh, you know, basically, um, that engine was tight when we sent it to you. And, um, you know, we've just never, we just haven't experienced this particular problem you're having. And I'm almost 100% sure it's because all you have a lot of plugged fittings and none of the water's exiting the boat. So, um, the best, just don't put any more hose to it. Just get the engine so it'll run and take it down to the lake and run it. Because th these engines notoriously run hot if anything's plugged up on them. And so if there's, a, there's something 
plugged up on it and it isn't flowing water right, the engine will sound an alarm and um, tell you that it's overheating. And with one of these, you can check the temperature of the engine as you're running it. You want it, you really don't want the engine to reach over uh, 200 degrees. It should be, uh, you know, 180 to 200 degrees or around 180 is basically the operating temperature. When it starts getting around 200 and 210, it'll, it'll, throw it'll say it's overheating and the buzzer will go off on you at that point you need to shut off the engine let it cool down a little bit and then go back over to the dock you know um slowly and um but if you just back the trailer up if you just back the trailer up to the boat or i, I mean leave the trailer leave the boat on the trailer i should say and um have it strapped down the drain plugs are in it so just back it in the water start it up right there and just let it idle right there and you can you can rev it up a little bit right there and see if uh, the engine starts overheating on you know give it about five minutes or so if it isn't overheating there then you can take it out into the lake and give it a try uh, this particular engine is uh, not the greatest at lower idles it tends to overheat and it will have overheating issues with it which are not the problem of the engine it's a problem of the cooling system, okay, which is a whole different deal. That's all produced from the jet pump and making sure that all these lines and stuff are all cleared out. So, anyways, if you have another technical question for me, it is much better for you to call me than to send me an, an open-ended question on eBay that requires a lot of technical uh, advice to answer. So, you have our office number. Uh, we're available during office hours. And you can call and uh, leave a message and we can help you with the installation as best we can. Anyways, uh, good luck with it and let me know how it goes if you need any further help.